Hello, welcome to the Debconf Travel Sponsorship Boff with Philip Hens and Ganef. Thank you. Welcome everybody. And let us start out with a short description of the past methods which we used in the past years. Basically, travel sponsorship means that we have to look at multiple hundred people who want money to get sponsored. And we had two different ways to do that in the past. The first one was that everyone, well, everyone has to apply for sponsorship and tell us how much they have in actual travel cost and how much they want to have sponsored. And the first method we used then was a very big IRC meeting where we actually talked about every candidate. Where we talked about every candidate and looked at his flight price and what he wanted to have and from where he came and also the contribution to Debian to actually judge if he should get a travel sponsorship or not. Everyone who was in the travel sponsorship team at that DebConf could vote for him, plus, minus, or nothing <coughs> at all. And in the end, we got out uh, voting for every candidate and could rate them and had a ranking. That ranking still had ties in it where multiple people got the same ranking in the end. And we had another IRC meeting to untie those people. And in the past two or three years, we actually do it by having people enter the data into Pentabaf and then have all the members of the travel sponsorship go into Pentabaf and rate the people inside there. They do see the travel am sponsorship amount they want to have and they see from where they are coming. They can also look up what they are doing for Debian and then they can rate people based on two values currently. One is about the contribution in Debian and the other one is the requested amount compared with other people that are coming from the same area. That also gives us a ranking. And afterwards we had an IRC meeting again where we talked about if we want to change the ranking and as we have limited amount of money available where we want to set a cutoff line, everyone be beyond that cutoff is getting told that they do not get any money at all and everyone before appears in an order and we tell them you can have money when the uh, actual budget team is telling us, yes, you have this amount of money available. So those are the ways we are having in the past. The way of selecting a team in the past usually was that someone who started the travel sponsorship went around and asked people, either on a mailing list or a lot of people directly. Like this year, I asked about 40 or 50 people if they want to participate. In the end, we had a team made out of 12 people who waited. In the past years, we had asked on mailing lists or also going around and just asking people. One goal of asking those people is that you want to have people from all around the world because you have applicants from all around the world and usually people local to those know them better and can better judge if they contribute to Debian or if they just want some money to have a vacation somewhere. So usually we end up with a team that is all around the world and an IRC meeting to coordinate is not all the nicest thing. Some people end up being in the meeting at 4 a.m. Some people end up in the meeting somewhere around 10 p.m. or so. And that's basically how it's working in the past. Uh, right. Well, every year we discuss this and uh, the problem that keeps on coming up again and again is that the rating system requires the last candidate to be in pretty much before you can start ordering people, which means that you have to wait till quite late in the day to give out money. And that's a bit of a shame because prices go up, so people's predictions of what things are going to cost are generally wrong. And it sort of punishes people for applying early because their idea of the prices could be radically wrong by the time they get money to pay for things. So it would be nice to come up with some scheme that actually rewarded people for applying early and rewarded people for, well, the system already does reward people for giving us lots of information. But if the assessment started as soon as the first candidate uh, applied, then that might be some way of encouraging people to apply early and also would give a way of giving feedback to people that give sort of insufficient details to, uh, to judge whether they're good or bad people to be sponsoring. Um, the trouble with that is that 
obviously you're going to, if you start giving out money before the last person's in, then the best, the best candidate for sponsorship might be the last candidate and they might unfairly be uh, given no money. But I guess that's sort of tough is the way I look at that. But <laughs> and there is one other problem with that to keep in mind because DevConf usually gets money from sponsors and real money available for something like travel sponsorship is usually available pretty late in the whole process because there are other expenses that are more interesting, like you want to have a venue actually or something like that, or you want to have accommodation already done and stuff like that. So travel money usually is freed up pretty late in the process. Yeah, so we have some sort of uh, agreement from Debian that we should be able to have a budget in advance of sponsorship for next year. Uh, which would allow us to start handing out money as soon as we start getting applicants. Uh, obviously, you don't want to just give money to the first person that turns up. So we could come up with some sort of metric where you wait until some number of people are in a queue, get all the people that are in the team or some proportion of the people that are in the team to assess them all. And if there's one standout candidate that everybody agrees definitely should be sponsored, then you can just give them the money straight away and then they can go and buy their tickets and that's someone that's out of the system. So I, I think we should treat it like people walking into an emergency room. So if someone is completely obviously going to die in the next two minutes, they normally get them straight through the emergency room and don't put them in a queue. In the same way, if we've got a candidate that's either so good or so bad that we can make a decision straight away, then we should do that because that frees up the team for doing the, uh, the choosing to concentrate on the difficult cases in the middle. But how we do that is another question which, you know, contributions welcome. Uh, the other thought I had was uh, that we want diversity on the team and we could do that in, by doing, there's some research about connectivity of social networks where if you pick people at random and then ask them who their uh, most connected friend is, or we might ask them who their most trustworthy for hand handing out money friend is, then you actually get a very good set of candidates compared with random. And it should, we could do that by doing stuff like the outliers on the, uh, the GPG uh, trust uh, keys, key, uh, web of trust, because that should, like the first most, uh, the least connected person on our web of trust and the second least connected person are very far from one another probably on the planet. And if we go through the list in that order, obviously we need to worry about people then gaming the system by making up new keys and things. But Making up new keys or saying, I don't sign all of you 10 people until I have my travel sponsorship, I'm in the team or something. Yeah, so you need to be I mean, careful. There, there yes. are serious problems with that. So maybe random is better. Um, and you still need to make sure that you get a very diverse... Yeah, so you keep on doing it until you've got quite a large team. You can carry on doing it if it turns out that some of the people... Obviously, you the person that's then nominated as their best mate needs to say yes to being on the team. Uh, once you've got enough people on the team, great. If halfway through the process it turns out that some people aren't doing anything, you can just create a few more team members if, if you're using that method. And that seems like a fair thing. I think if I was... I don't particularly want to be the chairman of this, but I've been talking about it for long enough so I'll probably end up doing the job. Um, well, if, if I was the chairman, I would not want to be voting unless there's some sort of tie break issue. Uh, because I think it's too easy to assemble a bunch of people that know one another from previous DevComs and then get all the, the friends from previous DevComs along rather than people that have never been. And it's much more important to have people that have never been come to DevConf. Something else I wanted to say. Uh, right, with this wiki page, uh, the URL for it is this. If you can see it, it's uh, wiki debconf for wiki debconf 11 travel sponsorship boff with a capital T, S, and boff. Um, if you've got ideas for this, just edit the page as we go along and I'll, I'll reload it occasionally. I can reload it now if you want. So we've pretty much done that bit. Uh, the rest of the page is that. Large enough, or shall I zoom it down and we get more text on the, uh, the screen? It's okay. 
So, I mean, we've got a load of points here which we can go through if people have got ideas that they want to contribute. Is someone monitoring IRC for this? I think we've covered, covered the idea that we should um, reward people for applying early. Uh, I, I, for the voting thing, I would prefer that the people on the committee uh, be given as much information as possible, like how much money we're likely to have, how much money the person's asking for, they can work out for themselves uh, how much it's going to cost, or they can discuss it amongst the team. But when they do their rating, I think they should just put people in order as if they were the only person making the decision. And then we have a mechanism for averaging that out, because that way you can... It's really easy if you've got an ordered list of people and a new person turns up in the queue to put them somewhere in that list. It's really difficult to, uh, if you've got how useful they are to Debian rating and how worthy they are of sponsorship and something else, the first person that you see, you will always give sort of middle rankings, even if you think, because you don't know if someone better or worse is going to turn up. Of course, this has a trouble that the DevConf team it's itself, the sponsorship team needs to give you a hard budget for that, and that's. If we get I don't that, think you do easy. because what you can do is so at the start we get ten grand from DevConf, so we can decide that we're going to give out some or all of that once we've got at least twenty people in the queue. So once you've got twenty people in the queue and a majority of the people or of the assessors or some other proportion have assessed people in the queue, you can then do an average rating. And if there's one person that's way, over, way up at the top, you just give them the money. And then you keep on repeating that process. And if there's someone right at the bottom, then you tell them terribly sorry, but your application's been rejected. That also gives people the chance to say, oops, I didn't fill any, any of the form in, and have another try, which would get rid of some of the problems that we have where people realize quite late in the process that they're not going to get uh, anything, and, yeah. and th that's partly because they failed to fill all the forms in. Do we have any suggestions or something coming here? Any questions? Or are you all just listening to Phil and me discussing? Um, this isn't really disagreeing with you. I think it's agreeing with what you're saying, but just to give a slightly different perspective, um, I've mostly tried to keep out of the actual allocation stuff. Um, this year, partly actually just because I didn't see the email from Ganeth until after a long time, I think. But um, normally I've tried to keep out of it. But I think we have, it has been a problem for many people over the last few years how late we've given trial sponsorship. And that's been perfectly fair to you with how we've worked, that we haven't wanted to allocate until we've had the money. But I think it, although it's going to be a hassle to do and it does cause problems, it would be a much better system if we could give out money much earlier. So, I mean, whether that's giving it agreed. the day after someone spends it or even or potentially for some I mean they, again there could exist people who should come to DevConf who do not have the cash to buy a plane ticket and don't have a credit card or whatever and again ideally we would have some system that in that case we can just buy it for them um, before they come because obviously the most important thing is getting people here I think we've got quite a good system at the moment for people who are well off from a rich country but just don't feel like paying for their flight. Um, but that's um, not yeah. really what we should have as our focus. In this year, for example, we have the Nicaraguan people who couldn't pay the tickets up front. And as it was decided they get here, we could get the money via SPI to them. It's not exactly the most liked way currently because there is trouble with getting the receipts and all the stuff later on. Of course, the earlier we give it out, the nicer it is. So if we get a budget and that says 10,000, 20,000, whatever, at some point, very early on, that would be really nice. Hector? Yeah. Um, I don't like the voting system. I think it would be better to try to think on a kind of a filter or a table and have like, you know, like uh, we value contributions or we value like have a set of rules and then apply these rules because voting, yeah, I know this guy, he's my friend and I vote him and give him 
a lot of points and then some other people I don't know. Maybe, so it's a bit biased. So uh, it's just a suggestion that could, could, yes, could um, change. And there is also... Um, wait, let me answer to that okay. one, please, and then the next. There, there are humans involved, so there's always a trouble with, I know this guy, so I will give him a little bit more. That's one reason why we always try to get the team as large as possible. As I've said earlier this year, I wrote to 40 or 50 people, and we had about 12 in the team later on. And we had the people as far away from each other as was possible. As long as you have some kind of human involved, you will always have a biasing in too. If you have a technical way to find out who is contributing more and who should get more money for something, we are all happy to hear about it. We would like to include that. Okay. I mean, it's like when you try to get into a government position, they, they kind of have a, give you points, and they have a table. So if you have uh, this certification, then you have more points than other that doesn't have it and, and things like that. So it's ki kind of more fair to people that you don't know. Or and there is also about the money allocation. Might be helpful or just a thought of like the money, if there's money left over from this DEPCONF to be al allocated for travel sponsorship on next, next DEPCONF. So you already have the money. And, and so I don't know, I mean, I don't know the accounting, but if you have like 20,000 <coughs> left over, you could allocate that for next year and have like, you have, you have DEPCONF minus one. I don't know if, it, if they, they make sense. Or, Right, the problem with doing the, we have a table and it says this person's got a higher rating than that person, is that it's very difficult to do that and sort of start the handout procedure before you've got the last person in. Because the temptation is always to think there's one person that hasn't applied yet who is better than all these people and we need to <laughs> reserve some money for them. Okay, so that's why I think that you should just get every person in the team to assume that it's their personal responsibility and that they should be, if they put someone at the top of their list, they should be able to justify why they did that. And they might do that by being informed by uh, a table that says that this person has made contributions, but they should be in a position to defend their decision. And if, if everybody acts as if they are the one person making the decision, uh, I think we're a strange bunch in Debian. Uh, so, one of the things that I think, just to make sure that there's sort of openness, if we can work out a way of in, including enough people, we should make sure that all those people are people that aren't applying for sponsorship. So, it's only people that don't need it that are making the decision, because then there's no even appearance of vested interest, and that makes it a lot easier for everybody to trust the team. If you do that, uh, most of the people in Debian who end up handling money at all don't even uh, claim legitimate expenses unless you sort of drag them screaming towards the money because it's, re it's really difficult to look like you're not... Um, the, it's really difficult to be in the position where you have access to that sort of money and um, not open to ac accusation of fiddling somehow. So I think we're... Comparing this situation to politicians is completely ridiculous, basically. Uh, all the people that are involved in Debian have already volunteered in a big way. They're not in, in it for some sort of weird self-interest. So, yeah, maybe there are one or two people that apply for tourism funding, but uh, it's not that often the case. I mean, that, that depends on what the policy or the rules you set, you know? So like. Is it on? Yeah, fine. Also, I want to reply to the part where you said, if you have leftover money at the previous DEPCOMF, then already give out that money. I don't want to give it out at DEPCOMF or shortly before at the la last DEPCOMF. That money should, in total, go back to the Debian budget, as we are with that, and only when we are opening the next budget for DEPCONF and now that we are having some money, either by the DPL applying it to us or by getting income from somewhere, 
we should actually spend money for various reasons. First, because it's not our money, it's Debian's money, so we shouldn't give it out. And second, I myself wouldn't be comfortable running around with three, four, five, six, eight hundred euros when I am, when I cannot be sure that I'm actually attending the next DevConf. There could happen a lot of things that actually prevent me from going to DevConf. Either my work says, no, you cannot go, or Debian says, we don't have DevConf anymore, or whatever may happen. And then I'm running around with multiple hundred euros of Debian money that I don't actually can do anything with, except for spending for a flight ticket for a DevConf that might not happen for me. Well, I was more meaning, like, if you go to LCA, you pay a fee, of, and this fee doesn't pay anything of that year, but pays next year, because they already have the money from previous years. So, I don't know. And also, I, I value more to sponsor people with is in Debian, because I feel like it's more like a family. I'm happy to see people I don't see during the year than maybe new people that you don't know, and well, maybe they might do good things for Debian in future, but maybe they just come once and you sponsor for as a new developer, but I don't know, might not be, I mean, I prefer to to sponsor well-known developers if they, if they need it, rather than new people that haven't been here. We actively try to sponsor more than the well-known developers. Of course, we have a limited amount of money. That's also one reason why last year Joey Hess got the Deb DebConf Newbies Fund actually from Debian, and this year we repeated it again, to have people that never have been in a DebConf or more than three years ago or something, to have some new faces coming to DebConf and not only those that we are seeing regularly here. I'm happy with having more people sponsored. If we have an unlimited amount of money, everyone can come. The more we have, the better it is, actually. Uh, regarding your idea on setting a table with uh, punctuation, uh, that leads to the pre precisely the same. Having a table even if it says, well, you're granted three points if you are a DD, then you're granted two points if you're doing video job. <clears throat> that, that doesn't really uh, solve the BS problem because after all, we, uh, uh, we would be biased to, to setting a, a scheme in a way that uh, benefits uh, each of the individuals in the, in the group or their close friends. I, I mean, any system can be tricked and uh, I think nobody, well, nobody should accuse the, the team of, uh, of knowingly is, uh, being selective about who is uh, granted more sponsorship or higher ranking or whatever. I mean, any, any system will have a, a, a good consequence and a bad consequence. Uh, this time, it, uh, well, uh, this discussion came if I'm not mistaken, after one incident of one person that was, well, in the opinion of many, un, uh, uh, unjustly uh, uh, ranked, well, it happens. I mean, we cannot just uh, avoid that. I think that the idea that you have this time uh, to bring uh, people who have not been uh, very involved in DevConf before is a very good one because we, uh, the DevConf or organizer team, have uh, have made well a very a real social group. I mean, we, we work together a lot uh, along the years. So bringing new people, I think, uh, lessens this. If you, well, I was not this year par part of the team. I, I was two, two years before that. Uh, it's not just that I enter and rate my friends and I rate uh, people I don't know. Uh, there's also a lot of discussion afterwards. So uh, even if, uh, one of the things that uh, most triggers discussion if, is that if I rated you with uh, plus five and he rates you at mi uh, minus four, then there's a huge disparity, and that's uh, the people that get more, more discussed, and uh, that tends to cancel any personal uh, personal bias or impressions. So I think uh, that I mean the, the just describing the process, it's not uh, something we just came up with and uh, uh, hope uh, hope it works. There's a question over on the last row, actually two. Um, over with Morgan. 
Next one was more concerned. No, I was I was waiting for you actually quite a long time. Um, I think that one of the things that would make it uh, easier for if we try to document it before. I mean, we are we ha now have some written things, but maybe get these spread out. And one of the things is this year incident was make a lot of noise, but last year we had a couple of incidents. We just had a little bit more time. Uh, they sent us an email and we fixed it. Uh, so every year we have this disparities. Uh, unfortunately, this year we couldn't fix it in time. Um, so as, as they said, if we have humans involved, there will be, even everybody thinks about the case where we leave somebody out of it, but if we start to change a lot the process to not, so that doesn't happen, we will have in the other type of error is having people that shouldn't be sponsored inside the list. So um, this is a trade-off that we have to keep. But I think that um, the list of, of how we do the processing would help. And there are some things that people requested and that would be very easy to others, like um, having no, it is hard to find the volunteers. And although I think Phil has this new method, this proposal to find people, it's always hard because you can ask them and they keep saying no. Um, some things are like, um, don't have people that I asked for a sponsorship and I was in the travel sponsorship <laughs> team so I could not accept the, to be in the team next time to make it more transparent. Um, or changing like oh, for everybody that is part of the team, the video team, have it outside this list. This is another thing, but then creates two lists of people. Um, and there are some ideas of that we should maybe think a little bit more is that the having some sort of maximum amount per place, but it's a huge work. And this is one of the things that we are discussing yesterday and I have no idea, because it would be great to have such, oh, if you're coming from Germany, the, mo the, the maximum we will re reimburse you is a thousand, but then who will make sure this is the right number? And Which so, is actually quite hard to do with the airline yeah. prices, they are mostly a lottery. I'm working for one and I talk to one of those doing the prices and forget it. There's nothing predictable in them. So I was thinking about um, what I think we need to define what, what we're, we're, we're aiming to do with the system. There, there's a couple of um, ways of doing it. Either it's, um, it's very subjective based, so you have people rating essentially. And, and, that, and that's got one set of problems. Uh, or you can do it, um, as mentioned before, about it being uh, very factually based, so setting up with points, and then that becomes quite clear. And the second one, it, it can work. Um, we do it in Cambridge with a project called Homelink, which is essentially for um, social housing, so people who can't afford rents, um, essentially as a as local authority, we give them somewhere to live and, and we pay their, pay their rent. Um, and, and that uses very much a, a, a process of points and bidding. So you use the, um, when the property comes up, um, the, high, the person with the highest number of points gets the property. Um, and so it is certainly possible to set up a, a system which does that. I think we need to try and work out what we're trying to do when we, when we order people and, and what we're trying to work out. Is it just, do they meet certain criteria or is it uh, a lot more about the value we think that they'll bring to DebComp for the amount of work, is it a reward? And trying to work out those fundamental points I think would, would certainly be, be useful. I think working that out is probably a task for the list because it will take some time. There's not just the, are they valuable for DebConf, but there are examples for, let's take a, a uh, big example in that case is Otavio, where you also need to keep in mind that he's handicapped and needs extra help and so has a higher amount. So a simple system is not all that, but probably a big discuss discussion on the list would be the best for that point. I think I mean, we've been talking a lot about the rules that should be put in place and the system for allocating the money, but we don't actually have it clear at the moment, kind of the starting point. Again, it's a slightly different thing from what Neil's saying, but what we, I don't think we have a good idea really of what the social expectation should be of who should even be applying, I'd say. I mean, there's some people who think 
they are working for Debian and they should, or rather, one, I'm not saying individuals are thinking about themselves, but just out of the ideas. Some people, at one end of the spectrum, some people say um, anyone working for Debian should apply for travel sponsorship. They're coming to DebConf, which is Debian work. Um, they should get, therefore, they should apply as many people as possible will get it. That's a valid view in itself. The other end of the spectrum is people who think, well, um, only people from, or we should be, we don't have that much money, therefore it should only be targeted towards people who really need it, um, who couldn't possibly afford to come otherwise. Obviously, there's a sort of gray area in between, but still, there's a question of what's actually, what is right here. I mean, personally, I haven't yet applied for travel sponsorship for DebConf, apart from in Edinburgh, where my application for one penny was denied. Um, <laughs> But because I've kind of had, always had the assumption that, that I know kind of there's not that much travel sponsorship money around and there's a lot of people who are poorer than I am. Um, obviously, I'd be quite happy to be told, actually, it's fine to just apply for it if you feel like it. Um, but we kind of haven't really had that discussion in a very serious way yet. Uh, I, think, uh, I think most of those questions are un unanswerable and that most people will think that there's a mix of all of those things in all of the decisions which is why I'd quite like to have a, a large team using a process that's very lightweight so that it's not much effort for them to do it, if that's at all possible. I have no idea if it is, because I've never actually done this, any of this stuff myself. So I have no experience whatsoever. So this is uh, probably the ramblings of an idiot. Um, but if we can do something like that, then each of those individuals can decide what the weighting they're going to put on each of those things. And if we make the selection process random enough, we'll get a representative sample, and then the result will be something like what most people think, hopefully. I mean, that, that's, that works around dealing with the situation that we don't agree, but it would still be quite friendly to, of us if we announced what we expected, who, who we expect should be applying. Do we think, as DebConf organization, that everyone should apply and we'll hand it out as we get it? Or do we think that it should be people looking at their own circumstances and applying if they really need it? I think that's also something we should discuss on the list because we are of way course. too small a team for that. My personal view on that has been that I've always applied for travel sponsorship, but I've always taken only a short part of the actual travel amount I had. So it's some kind DebConf is helping me pay the travel fare. I'm doing lots of work for DebConf, that's what I'm taking on that. But let's see what we are getting out on the list. Um, as we have Debian policy, I would suggest an action after this meeting of having a, like a DebConf policy. And, and Phil, for example, was saying we apply, I mean, we have to justify why we gave maximum punctuation for these people. So you pro probably have a criteria to give that evaluation. So just writing down this criteria and trying to get a consensus between everyone, I think that that will help. Writing down stuff will help unless you are getting too much written down and you are drowning and stuff. So you need to be careful how much you actually write down. Over there we have one more. Is somewhere visible what was asked and what was spent on traveling money? Um, it's visible inside Pentava for people that have an administrative committee or reviewers, right? It's not visible in the public at all. Are we? I think except. Yeah. Are we obliged to our sponsors? <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone have a laugh at that picture for now. That actually is travel sponsorship money, which we had to give out to people where the local bank system is, well, politely said, completely fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and now let me see if you actually can answer that. No, not. Com What's that for a keyword? The idea behind my question is, uh, what are we talking about? Is it the large, uh, has the large impact? We got a request around 50 to 60,000 
euros and got out 35,000 euros, something like that. In the past, at some point, we had a maximum in the statistics. That's why I'm looking here, but it doesn't look like we have those statistics this year. We can give out the maximum number in a, without... Ah, travel money, there we have it. So we got a complete travel fare for, to bring people here of 64,000. That is what they have in complete travel. And requested sponsorship is 46,000 and a little bit euros. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? And more, once more. Yeah, I, it's actually kind of the same point, but now you've got the numbers. Um, I was just going to say, I think if, if we did decide that everyone should be a, everyone who feels like it should be applying, then the number asked for would go up a lot here. Um, that, yes, and at the moment, that's another thing about the kind of, it's been a slightly, although it's been in theory, in principle, an open process, there's been a kind of close, uh, a, a group who knew about it and who felt that they were qualified and who had possibly some of them been involved in it before and knew who else had got it and so on. Um, so again, that's a kind of non-ideal thing at the, at the moment, that maybe there's a lot of people out there who just assume that they don't qualify. Some of the people involved in the team have thought, well, they probably do qualify compared to other people. That's, and then had a better chance of getting it. That's actually one thing DebConf newbies also try to avoid, that people think they are not qualified. And we made multiple statements on lists and on planet and on wherever that we have that money available. And seeing that I got something like 5,000 US dollars assigned by the DBL for that, and I can only spend something like 2,000, because people just didn't come to me and ask, and I cannot go to people and say, you should have money come up over to DebConf. They also needed to be a newbie. Hmm? <laughs> they needed to be a newbie to qualify for this, though. Yes, so they needed to be a newbie, but there people. should be newbies. Uh, there should be people who haven't been to any DebConf ever. There are lots of people in Debian who never have been here. We actually got two people suggested that should have from team members and stuff. Unfortunately, both of them had to refuse and someone had a visa trouble, something like 90 days they told him it takes for him to get a visa. First off, it would be uh, really helpful if all the people here could write their names on a piece of paper if, or put themselves into the wiki. Probably on the paper is the easiest way of doing this because uh, you're enthusiastic enough to actually sit here for, for the duration, so maybe you can help. If we want to bias this towards people that haven't come, then if we're doing some sort of random selection process, we could weight it towards people that haven't come and you know do that so that at least when we ask them to nominate someone, the person they're nominating knows someone who hasn't come, which would then help their application and also encourage them to think about applying because they know that someone that they know is going to be on the uh, assessment committee. Yeah, people in, the, people in the teams that actually know other people in their teams and want to have them and want to meet them and stuff, encourage them to do so. Tell them to go there, apply, and keep track of them actually staying in the timelines because many people somehow <laughs> manage to miss all the timelines for some reason. Just kick them repeatedly and tell them you want to have them at DebConf. It's a completely different event from everything they might know from the past, and it's really worth being here. I think also if we can, be, if we can actually do the early handout thing and we can be public about that, then that will encourage people to apply, because if, if they see that people have been rewarded for an early application, then they'll suddenly rush into the queue rather than thinking, yeah, I can do that at the end. Someone else with a question. Um, what I haven't heard, uh, 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 and that um, ideally uh, I would think uh, would be uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the factors is um, uh, someone uh, that gives a talk that uh, that we want uh, uh, that has a 
uh, strong plan of work for them camp um, or something uh, has a it's a factor uh, in a priority giving talks of course counts as contribution and if you have a very good filled out pentabuff applications and you usually also have something written in the field why the heck do i want to go to deb camp and if you have written something very impressive whatever you want to do there and one, two, three, five, ten, whatever events listed for you where you are contributing as a speaker or something, that counts at least as much as having 10 million packages for Debian or being in five core teams, whatever. Was there any attempt to, to use a travel agency or to contact them? Uh, up, up to now, there was no attempt as far as I know. I think at some point we talked to someone. Um, Ubuntu has travel agency experience using that for their UDS. And in the DebConf discuss list, they actually wrote about it, that usually if you are using a travel agency, you are having a high cost added on top of the usual ticket fare because that's how they are staying alive. So it's actually giving out more money if you're using a travel agency. Also, uh, another problem with uh, using travel agencies is that, well, we can only uh, give, uh, give uh, travel refunds. We cannot pay in advance. And uh, uh, travel ag agencies uh, work only when you pay them in advance. There's one thought actually that came up if we can do payment in advance if we actually have the budget. If ESA the DPL says, yeah, you have something like 10,000, do it and have fun, then we could pay in advance actually. We still need to keep in mind that travel agencies actually want some money to live. It's their job after all. And well, not only that, but we are usually trying at least to do a plenty good way in telling people that there are things like Check Felix or Opodo or something where you can search for flights going over multiple airlines, multiple other providers and stuff. Of course, that's not a perfect travel agency, but usually it makes it out cheaper. And uh, well, uh, not only that, but uh, it, it's also that uh, we, we don't usually know the, how, how much uh, money will we have for DevConf. Usually until, say, this year, April, May, it started looking as, uh, close to what we ended up having, but figures always look very bleak at that uh, point in time. So we never know how much money we, we will be able to approve. At some point in a well, team meeting, it is told uh, to, the, to the sponsorship, okay, we will have uh, 30,000 euros for, for that and we can just wish it works, but we have to be close to real figures for that. Right, looking at the time, we are nearly out of time, so if there's one more question here, we could do that. There is one more question, Hector, once more. Not a question, just a comment, and it's just uh, maybe the fundraising team should might need more help and look all, all into other ways, not just look into a sponsoring companies, but maybe set up Kickstarter projects and things like that. I don't know how would you feel like that. I mean, people could be paying 20 euros and you can collect a lot of money out of, out of that as well. Uh, I did have a comment from someone here that we should uh, allow people who can afford to pay more than they need to to uh, realize that they'll actually make sure that people come here and possibly provide routes outside Debian and DebConf for funding particular people if they want to, so that those people don't need to come to us for sponsorship, which seems like quite a good idea. I don't think it, it's necessarily something that we can directly get involved in because of the SPI being a, a non-profit. And uh, so if you say, here's $50 for a particular person that doesn't really fit with the non-profit thing but if we had a structure outside of the SPI money handling for putting uh, individual sponsors in touch with individual sponsorees that might help take the load off us and would allow them to negotiate something way before we have to do any of the assessment okay and with that 
time is up. Thank you everybody for participating and please participate on the list and on the wiki and wherever and help to get the travel sponsorship process next year maybe a bit nicer, maybe a bit less complaints. We always had complaints, we will always have them, but maybe we are getting a bit less. Thank you for uh, participating. Thank you.